the the problem I think with this and this this actually harkens back very much to what I've been reading a lot with uh, C.S. Lewis um, is the idea that actually we aren't merely matter. You know, that's the problem is reducing the human and everything that humans have built to mere matter uh, and then trying to explain the existence of a cathedral. Uh, why does that exist? Well, it's a thing of tremendous beauty and it used to be, you know, the center of like the, the, the city's community, but you can't really explain it in purely material terms. And so you have to explain it in transcendental terms. You have to suggest that actually there's a kind of spiritual order that is being upheld with these things. And this requires a great stock of wisdom in order to show, look, it's the, could, because the, the materialist can't explain what the actual benefits of people sincerely believing in a transcendental order are, but they're obviously worth them because we've got these great and beautiful cathedrals that everyone wants to go and see. People come from all over the world, see the, the wonderful cathedrals, take pictures and look at these amazing buildings. And it's like, okay, but that wasn't science that built those. So how did they come into existence? Um, yes, and the, actually you've, you've hit upon a very important point here because mm. this shows precisely how we are to think of ourselves nowadays. Mm. The, as you say, the, the, the materialist <laughs> would try to say, well, we, we built cathedrals because we were, we were under this, the erroneous idea mm. that a God exists. The irrational belief. Yes. Mm. So there's a constant effort to drive a wedge into our self-consciousness yeah. and to constantly think of everything that we think of ourselves as being a lie that we tell to ourselves. Yes. For instance, the idea that we are beings with responsibility mm. and freedom to, to choose mm. and freedom to think and freedom to act. They would say, well, you are looking at the, uh, the world this way, but this is a lie. And uh, everything has become a lie. And that, that's very interesting because Within the spiritual, we'll, we'll, we'll just call them, you know, the spiritual traditions to describe this kind of transcendental order that every civilization up until now had as well. Um, <clears throat> this is where the stock of wisdom resides, right? So, it, okay, so you've got the, the Christian doctrine, right? Okay, get married, have children, be faithful. You know, th this, uh, to say, okay, th there is no spiritual order here is to say that everything that is contained within the spiritual order is null and void. It's yeah. not, it's, it's all a lie, like yes. you say. And so, and the, you see this radical position with this sort of liberation feminist. It's like, well, okay, well, I can, I can be as, 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 as free sexually as I want. This is what sexual liberation is. There'll be no downsides to any of this. And of course, these women are learning that actually, you know, they're, 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 this may work in the sort of 10 years of their youth, but after 30, suddenly the the problems with this that their grandmothers would have known become much more apparent. And then as they reach their 40s, they start becoming a bit bitter about the lie that they were told, that there was no truth in the spiritual order, that they were so quick and easy to throw away because they had no respect for the, the wisdom contained therein. This is the, the opposite side of the same <clears throat> coin, mm. that if on the one hand we want, we view ourselves in a, in a positive way, mm. and we are told that this is an illusion, the, the opposite side of the same coin is that if we th are doing something that we would consider bad, and that would go against our natural mo moral sensitivities and mm -hmm. moral sentiments, well, again, that's- Can't be bad. Can't be bad either. Yeah. If there's no good, there's no bad with it. And so like you say, we're amoral beings. Yes. Why can't I just attend as many orgies as I want? Well, <laughs> the wise man would say you'll learn the hard way. And unfortunately, a lot if of people are. They get the way. opportunity to talk. Yes, yeah. Well, and and if they don't, okay, fine. But the wisdom contained within the iterative process of building up the stock of knowledge, it's not. It you know, it's it's kind of there whether you like it or not. And so, okay, you can say, look, I'm going to ignore all of that. I'm going to get on with it. You'll just be starting at the position zero where it was like, okay, well then I will go through, get the experiences and oh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. That's a permanent disease I can't get rid of. This has ruined my chances of ever finding a partner. And then suddenly you you end up at the end of the process with all of the knowledge you would have gained at the beginning of the process if you just listened to the tradition first. Yes. Um, it's an interesting thing though to move one step backwards mm -hmm. and focus on the epistemic side of it. Mm. And I think this is precisely okay. what is driving many of your worries. Yep. So this idea that 
natural science is right now, the way that we give all explanations, including every single aspect of human action. Mm -hmm. This has some good, uh, this, it has some good implications. Yep. So for instance, we can look at someone who has an epileptic seizure, mm -hmm. and instead of saying that this person is possessed and we should burn them, yep. we, can look at, we can look at it as a mechanical failure. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But on the other hand, so in, in one sense, science is incredibly liberating. But in another sense, it does threaten to create a void and a situation where we are not able to find meaning mm. in the way that we come to conceive of ourselves. It's an issue, issue of self-conception. Mm. And again, self-conception uses language to express who we think we are and who. Yes and what we think we stand for. What, one of the problems of abandoning the sort of, I, I, I'm just gonna keep calling it the spiritual, I don't mean divine necessarily, but the sort of transcendental conception we have of the universe. One of the problems of abandoning that and going straight into pure materialism is that, okay, well, it turns out that we are merely material as well. And so anything that was sacred about a human being, well, actually, your fungible matter, just as much as this table or you know the chair or whatever, why shouldn't you be treated as such? Which leads us into thinking that whenever we feel or mm. we think, yeah. I prefer the word think, okay. that we have been <clears throat> wronged, yep. uh, that this is all a lie. Mm -hmm. It's just a way that the brain looks at the world. Yeah. and It's uh, just a useful illusion. We, we could change the way that we perceive the world by simply changing the brain chemistry and that would solve the problem. Yes. And I think that this, incidentally, I think that this approach is uh, failing, especially when it comes to psychotherapy. Well, it, the, the, this is... The, surprise, the, surprise. There are memes about this all over the internet because they're so obviously true. Where the meme is just, you know, some young man or young woman who goes to the doctor and says, doctor, I'm really depressed. I do this thing, I do that thing, I do the other thing, and it's making me really sad. And the doctor's like, well, here's a pill yeah. so you won't be sad anymore. It's like, okay, but why not stop doing the things that are making you sad? Uh, yes, and this is actually uh, the difference between treating a person as a purely passive being, mm. in which case the disorder is purely a mechanical disorder and yeah. it has to yeah. get addressed mechanically, yeah. and actually viewing a person as having simultaneously a passive mm. nature and an active, yeah. which has to be uh, yeah. dealt with. Then they're not treated as the author of their own misery. They're, they're not the agent in the circumstance. Yes. And so, but they are the agent in the circumstance. They literally are saying, I do this and it makes me sad. Yes. And if there is no focus on the idea that we can somehow reset the clock mm. and start anew, there is no empowerment. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. They're, they're being literal slaves to their desires and they're not taking control of the actions that they're taking. So they can't help themselves but to do it. And all you're saying is, well, we can mitigate the consequences. Yes. And I think it's interesting to look at the idea of outsourcing judgment, because mm. in a sense, the way we think is an essential part of who we are. Yeah. We cannot take away our thoughts from ourselves easily. Mm. We... What remains is in what we are now, let's say. Let's put it this way. Well, I it's, mean, we, we would literally call that person kind of brain dead, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. So the idea is that <clears throat> when we have people who say that natural science is the only way in which the universe can be understood and the only, it, it shows us the entirety of the universe because I'm, I'm, I'm not the person who will deny that science gives us facts. I'll be that person. No, I'm not joking. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you, the of question course. is how many facts yeah. and whether it, all facts can be known by science. And wh whether those facts are even relevant to the situation that you currently find yourself in. Yeah. It's like, does it, do I, does it matter? that, okay, maybe maybe the way you feel is the the chemistry of your brain. Okay, fine, but I'm not going to let you mess with my brain chemistry. So now we're not having that discussion anymore at all. Now we're, now we're talking about the way that you treat me or the way that I treat you and, you know, human concerns that are in the domain of wisdom. 
To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.